Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And <coughs> very good morning Okay, uh, last class If I'm not mistaken, I stop at uh, These types of layout Just uh, to recap back uh, We have a few types of layout Which is, we are already Currently in topic 4 Okay, I hope that you are not um, Forget Okay, about because right now we are in week uh, 12, okay, so it's around the corner and next week is the submission for your business plan, entrepreneur's profile and also YouTube presentation, okay. Alright, um, the types of layout, okay, we have the first is layout based on the products, okay, as you can see, I just show you the diagram here. Uh, this is about uh, the fruits processing. Okay, we have start with the uh, receiving area of the fruits, the fruits cleaning area, and then washing area, the fruits chopper, and then steaming, cleaning area, and then the finished food storage. Okay, and yeah, there will be office there. And so this is the example of the layout based on the product. Okay, and then we have also. Uh, example of the layout based on the process, okay, which is to have the continuous process. Then we have the storage area, drilling machines, two rooms, grinding machine, and mining machine. We need to say they have to go with first process until the end of the process. And then uh, this is example of layout based on the marketing. Uh, so mostly you can see this um, in the supermarket retailers, okay. They purposely doing the kinds of uh, like this, thing, uh, what we call like uh, they have pantry products, frozen food store, and then there will be like ice lay here, okay, to to make sure that when the customer moving their trolley, they can have something like eye view on. Actually, it's quite quite broad eye view, right? Um, to see all the and the reason. Sometimes in our chart list, it's only have five items to buy, right? Uh, at the end, when you want to pay to the cashier, it's from five items, things to buy, it's become ten items. Are you agree with me? So this is the thing because of the layout of the marketing, all right? And some more layout on uh, example of layout in restaurant also is a part of the marketing. So you can see how does it like dining area, Put display counter, for example, to put all the dish, beverages. If you realize, like Mama restaurant or uh, the another restaurant too, they have like this kitchen. Somehow the kitchen is look like transparent to the customer to see how they uh, prepare your dish, right? And then they have a counter, and cashier, and also the store and toilet. Of course, it will be like mostly it will be nearby to the kitchen, okay? But three should be far away. Huh? Uh, to avoid, uh, of course, we want to maintain the hygienic and cleanliness. Okay, All right. So we are moving to the next one. It's about production planning. So we have some, I can say, little bit of a uh, minor calculation. Okay. So as you can see from here, it's important to make sure that the business is able to produce output or to provide services that is enough to fulfill the expected market demand of sales. So this can be achieved by having the good production planning being started while in here. So in the production planning, the business will determine how much the output to produce for a certain period of the time, such as in the day, a week, or a month. And the business may need the information from the marketing plan, for example, average sales worker. So from there, they know how much they need. Actually, actually, they want to do the production planning. Okay, and then. The example of the calculation for output per day, let's say the average sales forecast per month is being estimated like 25,200 and then cash per unit is 15 ringgit. So the number of output per month that you produce is 1,680 units. So this is the basic business mathematics. Right? Then don't even ask me, madam, how you get these figures and just divide it. Huh? And if the numbers of the working days per month is 24 days, so the amount of output to be produced per day, per day, huh, is will be equal to 1,680 units because state 1 is a per month. And then it will be divided by 24 days because it's equal to the output per produce per day. We need to say effective days that they work for a month. 
will be 24 days and it equals to 70 units per day. Okay. So don't ask me also, madam, how you get this? Madam, how you get this? So you have to do it because some of you are buying money, you know, right? So you can refer because inside there, there will be more. Actually, it's same. Whatever that I attach to it in the new and also menu, but menu, you can see, you can actually to have some calculation inside that. And of course, like, this one is more soft copy, right? It's so like the same thing, the same materials that I give to uh, both, even like my students buying manual and also uh, with online okay uh yeah okay so the material planning okay what is the material planning material planning is done to determine the type and amount of the raw materials need for the production so the material planning involves four steps so number one we have to identify and list down the raw materials required and prepare the bills of the materials calculate the quantity of the raw materials required and identify the suppliers of the raw material. So this is the full step. So if let's say the question come up, maybe this question will come up for MCP question. Okay, they will ask you what is the fourth step, and which is the first step, second step, third step, and fourth step, and then uh, what is material planning definitions? Huh? All right. So uh, the first one, uh, the first step, identify and list down the raw materials required. Usually in manufacturing business, the raw materials is to easily identify. Of course, um, mostly when we are in the process of your production, process of production, of course, you want to make sure that the raw material is easily to be assessed. Okay, so example to manufacture a pencils, raw materials needed are hollow wood, uh, lead, razor, metal band, paint, glue, and packaging box. Maybe some of you maybe forget how it looks like a pencil, right? I should find out because my pencil here, I don't have like rubber here. But mostly you remember during our secondary, I know our generation is not the same generation, but I used also to in primary school. So the Pencil that we use during primary school mostly at the back here there will be like a rubber, right? Uh, but in here they say it's have raw materials like such as a hollow wood. So this is hollow wood, and there will be lead. Lead is here, different in in pencil, and then eraser. That's why I said we don't have the rubber here because the eraser mostly at the back here, and mechanical pencil also they have rubber if I'm not mistaken, and also metal band. Uh, metal band for those maybe they put some. In order to make sure that the pencil will be low, very comfortable, and then they have also have pain. Okay? Uh, of course, they want to make sure that what color red chocolate here, right? To make it um like colorful, okay? They say color pencil, huh? uh, Blue, and also the packaging box. So basically, this is the thing that we need in the moment because I got some questions from the student, madam. Do we have to provide all the materials under the flow chart? process of the chart and with each of the raw materials yes okay in order to make like bahulu let's say example right we need flour sugar we need um those things okay yeast egg okay and preservative coloring okay you have to add it on inside and you have to tell it what you you have to provide included in the raw materials okay in the case of the retail business the raw materials is known as the goods so the business needs to estimate the amount of initial goods to be purchased to start the business operations. Okay, right. So that is about identify and this down. And then the next one will be goes to Maria. Okay. Uh, prepare the materials bills. Okay, the bills of the materials. The bills of the materials. Um, will contain a complete list. Bills of materials is contain a complete list of the materials, parts of the component, and the amount needed to produce a unit of products. So to prepare the bill of the materials, the entrepreneur must understand the design of the product. So the skill of the material is important information for purchasing activity. So this is how the looks like of the bills of materials. Okay, so bills. Okay. 
something like invoice okay so Yeah, my uh, yeah, we call this one. Uh, thank you, Kak. Uh, sometimes, uh, my what we call that, yeah, my uh, mic will be like a uh, problem. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this is a product number, the serial number for that specification of the product. Today we have our product 101, this which is half hollow, hollow wood, that is specification 70, 70, 10, 10 meter long, and then the quantity is 2, okay, and then uh, 102, lead 70, 70 centimeter long, 1.5 millimeter diameter, 103, eraser 0 0.75 cm, okay, 6 millimeter diameter, 104 metal band 2, centimeter long and then 105 pin and it will be like 0 0.5 milliliter and 106 is glue 0 0.5 milliliter is one so this is a uh, example of the bill of the materials uh, that mostly provide okay when you want to use uh, in the part of the operation plan huh? so this is the example of the materials requirement schedule okay uh, in the part of here, I want you to make sure uh, that basically um, you calculate it uh, in the correct way. Ah, why? Because uh, I give you example here, we have flour, sugar, eggs, uh, corn syrup, and margarine. So this is example, maybe you want to make donut. It can be donut or maybe you want to make some cakes on that. Okay, so... Uh, they have quantity on 50 kilograms of the flour and safety stocks is referring to your backup or in store stock. Huh? If let's say you use to cook, you use 50 kg, so you have another balance 5 kg for your what we call backup. Backup uh, for all we can call safety stock. So total material requirement, 50 kg will plus with 5 kg will equals to 55 and then you times with 1 ringgit 20 cent equals to 66 ringgit. Okay, maybe some of you will be wonder here, madam, why we have to include the safety stock even though we use only 50 because it includes all that you purchase for that particular month huh? in order for your production. For like a sugar, the same thing also, 50 kg plus 1 kg, 55 and times with 2.8, 2 really 80 cent equals to 154. And for the eggs, we have 200 units, and they have service stock 20, 220, and price per unit will be 50 cent. Actually, I wonder how the price of it can 50 cents per unit. Yeah, let's see, maybe they take from who say the right, 33 ringgit. And corn syrup is equal to 100 liter plus with 10 ringgit, eh, sorry, 10 units, 10 liter of the safety stock, and will be 110. It's going to be 330. And for the margarine, it's 150 plus with 10 kg equals to 110. Then comes with 2, will become 220. Make sure that the total price will be equals from head to two, from head to tail. Uh, if not, you will have problem in part of the financial plan because we want to derive this all uh, what we call uh, element prices in here towards um, next plan. Huh? Okay, and then we do have machine and equipment planning. So the first one steps to determine machine and equipment requirements. So this is also one sort of possibility question come out in final exam. Okay, number one, we have to list out all the machine and equipment required based on the process for check to the process plan. Okay, you have to list all out the machine and equipment. And number two, determine the amount of machine and equipment required based on the venture capacity requirement. And the last one, identify the suppliers that are available in terms of the price and after sales services. So, 
So this is the question. Mostly I can say that every semester will come up. So what is the factors to be considered in purchasing machine and equipment? So we do have price, quality and reliability. And then we have the availability of the spare parts. Breakdown, maintenance, facility, technology and user friendly. Supplier, reputation and also after source. So this is the factors that to be considered in purchasing machine and equipment. So for those who have... Um, yeah, manual, okay. And for those who are in new, right? I think that everybody in new, you can turn to page. sudden right price to be considered in purchasing machine and equipment at the page I believe that they have because I'm the one who compile these books, right? Factors to be considered. There's none here. But it's okay. I think that I already seen before. Okay, maybe in page uh, 250, but not be tested here. Okay, but it's okay. Um, as long as you have these things, right? Because we're talking about factors to be considered in purchasing machine and equipment. We have at the final page. I forget where is actually the right pages here. Okay. I will get back to you inshallah on this. But uh, for those who are looking for of course the what we call the slide, of course the slide will be at page two hundred. 280, 70, 78, 278. Uh, so for this, okay, it should be have actually the explanation on this. I will go through on that, okay? It's there one day, okay? Right, so the next page, okay, example of the machine and equipment requisition planning schedule. So this is about how much that the machine want to buy. So we do have mixer. So this is example. Just let's say the price is 2000 per unit. We just go with the 2000 straight forward. Cutter to cut for quantity. So price per unit will be 1000 because 12,000. Cash register 1500. So total will be 12,500. Okay, this one is easy. Okay, so steps to determine quantity for machine and equipment. Number one is determine the frame rate for the production project. Okay, of the production project. We can only calculate the activity. Some simple calculation before this. Okay, and determine the standard production time per unit for the plant machine. And the third one, determine the machine productive time, operation hours minus setting up time plus downtime and the fourth one calculate the amount of machine required using the formula given in the next slide so this is the formula to calculate the amount of machine required i don't remember for this time of any exam there will be like uh with some like uh maybe calculation simple calculation number of machine required and then the rate of the production per day uh, for machine productive time per day and comes with standard production time per unit. Okay, 
So main power planning steps to determine the amount of direct labor required by the venture. So um, the first one, determine the plan rate of the production per day for the particular section of the job. Okay. And then uh, number two, the second step, determine the standard time for the worker to produce one unit of the product or to complete a particular job. And the third one, determine the workers' production hours, working hours per day minus rest time of the workers' idling time and calculate the amount of direct labor required. So this is how he took like number of worker required equals to the plan rate of the production per day divided by worker production time per day time with the worker spend the production time per unit. So this is the example. That I already teach you before this to remember the third uh, topic at the last huh, the last video I teach you how you can get this amount. So the salary monthly will be actually minus, huh? not here. EPF 13,000 here is referring to, actually this is not, this is for employers, okay? But we calculate on employees. So salary minus 2,000 will be for employers and employees, okay? And then employers straightforward 260, but you have to come up with another one, 12%. And then two percent, then you can get the amount. Okay. Okay. But for this, just to highlight to you all, uh, this is the example of schedule for those who are direct labor planning in that particular department. So for those in the department of operation, there will and production, there will be directly doing this work. You can have the calculation on that workers, but if there is none involved, let's say. This operation manager should be in the first one, administrative manager, uh, in the administrative plan. Okay, alright, and then the overheads requirement determine the overheads that are required in the operation. So overheads refer to requirement other than direct raw materials and direct labor. So example of the overheads are indirect labor costs, and then we have indirect materials, insurance, maintenance, and utility. So for this time. Uh, you can actually refer to uh, page page sorry page 279 and here huh? okay and then this is also potential also question come up for financial plan Alright, and then for the location plan, so this is also, I will come out this one for exercise, later I will do the exercise. Um, location plan, the entrepreneur has to make decision which premise is the best for the business to operate. So the choice of location is important because it will affect the server revenue, the business operation cost, and also long-term investment. Okay, so factors that influence the choice of the location. So this one, if I'm not mistaken, it has in the long notes, page 230, okay. Uh, the first one for the manufacturing activity, priority should be given to the cost factor. And of course, in manufacturing, cost sharing would be contributed to party. When your manufacturing uh, activity will be like uh, impact to the certain of the cost factor, it will be also affected to your contributions to the profit and for the service activity service priority uh, should be given to the distance from the market and also the customer or the customer so uh, of course when we're talking about the distance from customer we influence the source revenue because we are talking about the logistic cost huh? and then in service business cost saving may not contribute to the source revenue uh, so it is like in the manufacturing because manufacturing when come to the cost saving uh, it comes to from the cost factor okay so that's why it because it's directly uh, affected to the profit but in the service activity will be different because increase in revenue will contribute to the increase in profit so um i might say even though it like indirectly it will be influenced to to adjust on um your revenue itself 
So even though it said not contribute directly contribute to the sales revenue, but indirectly it will be contribute to the increase on the profit. Huh? Okay, so this is um uh, for the slide notes. Okay, it's been stated and been added a little bit on the point here. Uh, distant from the raw materials factors to be considered for the choice of the location, meaning to say your maybe operation locations or maybe your uh, we can say brick and mortar mean uh, HQ, okay, home home office, home, uh, okay, the main headquarters, and then uh, we do have a uh, level supply, and then also transportation price of land or rentals. And okay, price of land or rentals means to say it's more strategic place and in the urban area, let's see. So you will be like more high cost needed. But if they say might be not strategic places and maybe rural area might be more cheaper, but to get the potential customer will be like chances is very low. And of course, infrastructure also will be influenced in terms like the facilities of. Um, LRT, public transport, right? MRT, or maybe it's nearby to a uh, railway station, so maybe low, but nearby to police stations, okay? Or the big infrastructure nearby, so will be more expensive, okay? Compared to uh, those, the location may be so far away, okay? And maybe it's quite like, like I say, it's uh, difficult to get this infrastructure now. So the potential to get low cost for the choices of location may be. Um, high, huh? and for the climate also we have to what we could have to bear in mind because uh, we are talking about uh, how does uh, the location uh, given some certain location for example like in um, west sorry in uh, east region for example like in clan country Ghana, right so this is the location whereby they have potential climate Whereby at the end of the year there will be like flood, right? So mungkin yang besar boleh kini banjir. So I believe, okay, uh, this one will be like uh, I do not know why this video. Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. In terms of the climate, uh, this will be influenced. So. And we see the potential of the location maybe um, to get the risk on uh, climate okay, or natural disaster so we should avoid on it but of course uh, for those locations that will be uh, exposed to this kind of climate and um, like a flood natural disaster will have potential to have a low cost huh? but yeah it depends huh? local government policy of course sometimes um, a certain of the area being gazetted as maybe low cost housing, okay. Uh, so low cost for um, houses, okay. Uh, so this will be like uh, the choice of the location, okay. It will be like low cost uh, place, uh, area because it's being protected by the policy of the government. And in terms of the security, meaning to say, uh, certain places they have very a strong and very uh, complete okay, in terms of the uh, powerful security and distance. So uh, in terms of this also will be influenced in terms of the price and also the area of the location. Uh, maybe there will be equipped by like, uh, CCTV and maybe they will equipped with like a uh, card, okay, personal and security card okay, and maybe certain password you have to encode inside before you entering the per permits. Uh. Uh, so this is the thing is also choice of the location and then um, the last one facility for expansion and business development so as I told just now if let's say the location is nearby to the certain facilities and let's say nearby to MRT, LRT okay and maybe some of the location maybe um, is, uh, they have more like uh, stores, grocery stores uh -huh. so um, the facilities uh, like parking for example parking space elevator okay, and during emergency they will be easy to contact the nearby police station and so forth they will be easy 
for that. Huh? Okay, so uh, we moving to the next one. Okay, business and operation hours. So business hours refers to the time that the business is open to the customer. So we need to say mostly you see right when you go to the shop, you go to the certain uh, retail stores, they will say business hour from eight a.m. to five p.m. or maybe from eight a.m. to eight p.m. So the when they put this kind of the time business hours, actually they give some flexibility to you all to make sure that uh, the the customer know where actually when actually they are online. Of course, uh, when we talking about online, people might say online is twenty four hours, okay? But uh, of course there will some have some a certain rest time. And at the same time, business hours like in a brick and mortar is different from brick and click system, right? Brick and mortar mostly they have uh, physical stores, and you have to make sure that they have like certain things to be respected, okay, the time, okay. If let's say you go to maybe after, okay, the business hours, they have the right to not entertain you because they already, can I say gazetted, they have already stated, okay, at their maybe website or maybe at their stores that when actually their operation hours, okay. So, operation hours refers to the hours the workers have to work, okay. So, uh, sometimes business hours will be different from operation hours, so it depends. Okay, for manufacturing, usually the business will operate 8 hours per unit. So, thus, the entrepreneur will only decide whether the business will run for one shift or more. So, basically, like manufacturing, they will have like around three shifts. So, they will depend upon the planning for the production. Okay, so, uh, for the business and operation hours, for the service business, the entrepreneurs will have to state the business hour in terms of the days and also hours. For example, a restaurant may open to the customer from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. So mostly, mostly the restaurant will open and put in front of the restaurant okay, when it's their operational hours, the business hours. However, the operation hour for the worker will be different. Uh, that's I said, even though the business hour like 8 to, to 10, okay, like KFC, McDonald's, but they will be start operating, operation hour will be different. So the working hours may be from 5 a.m. to 12 a.m. So the entrepreneurs may have two shifts for the workers. The first shift start from 5 a.m. to 3 p.m. The second shift start from 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. It depends on that, okay? So for the license permit and regulation, okay? Um, again, so what actually inside this contact? So they will find out and list them all the license or permits regulation that are required to operate the business. So they will be identify which agency is responsible to approve the particular license or permit. Like in Malaysia, I, I do not know how about in uh, Indonesia, but mostly in Malaysia we have some like uh, authority like under municipal, Majlis Komadaran. So we do have DPKL, Dewan Bandaraya Kuala Lumpur, and in here like Taman Batu Muda we have um, MPS, Majlis Pembadanan Selayang and let's say you are in nearby Ampang, we have uh, MPAJ, Majlis Pembadanan Ampang Jaya and let's say you are in the in the area of Majlis um, uh, Petaling Jaya, MP, Majlis Pembadanan Petaling Jaya, let's say you are in Putrajaya, Majlis Pembadanan Sepang, okay and there will be a different municipal responsible for the authority of the business of business area but um, maybe Indonesia student one day you can come to Taman Batu Muda here to IIC campus. So you can see that in here we have like two actually like half half area. But uh, Taman Batu Muda is located in under DBKL municipal because it's Kuala Lumpur. Because even though it's situated in Selangor, Selayang Batu Kep Selangor, however, uh, however we have some stone there at the Batu kata macam double bay stone to differentiate this is a Selangor area this is Kuala Lumpur area so Taman Batu Muda International Islamic College College Islam Tarabangsa 
di bawah pemandangan Dewan Bandar Raya Kuala Lumpur. Okay. So, if you want to do business around here, so it's under the BKL. Okay. So, so, there will uh, the authority who get some license and permit to that when you want to apply for certain business. Okay. You want to open a story, you want to open, for example, cyber cafe, or photo uh, shop, okay, photocopy shop, or maybe you want to open like a small kiosk, anything, okay, you might legal business, okay, uh, it will be come from them, okay, so they say here, for example, restaurant among the others will need the following license or permit and regulation, so license for the signboard, so the signboard, if you realize mostly what happened, the municipal may be take it off, okay, because they are put in certain places that illegally, illegally meaning to say illegal way, they not get some permission, so how we want to differentiate madam between the legal signboard uh, uh, permission or illegal okay if the legal authority have uh, give some permission in order to hang there to put your banner there they must be have some sign okay they have some authority authorization from that particular municipal which area is that uh, so they give some authority okay you can stick it here how, how many days or how long duration, maybe one month. Not every and from the first month of the year of the year until end of the year, no. Huh? Sometimes it takes time. If you want it's one year, then might be you have to rent it, you have to lease it. Sebab kawasan ni selalunya uh, tempat-tempat yang untuk menampal macam signboard dan sebagainya, they will leasing it, they akan sewakan tempat tersebut, signboard tersebut ok, so they must get the permission first, ok, second one permits for the immigrant workers uh, let's say you employ maybe like uh, immigrant workers for your maybe shop or restaurant you have to get them like a visa for like permit workers the uh, visa for working uh, working permit, not as a student not as other, etc, etc purpose for working Okay, and then the last one, tripod injection for the workers. Why the reason we need this tripod? Okay, uh, because we are in the cycle of population environment. Okay, when uh, you are running the business involving food and beverages industry, uh, I believe this tripod injection is very important. Okay, because it's involving something like vaccine to make sure that uh, you've been protected and you are safety and healthy enough to prepare the food and things for your customer uh, especially why because they think okay, let's say your hands been cut off by the knife example and then you get some bleeding okay if let's say your fingers bleeding and then suddenly you are not the one who the workers who get typo injection all sudden this blood may be contaminated in the food that you prepare or the drink that you prepare it will be affected other person why because it's something like the things involving like disease nyakit uh, typo injection maybe you can have some google and reading about this but this is what i know for as far as my my concern this is what the importance of the typo is about your immunization and also vaccine to protect you and also your customer uh, that's why when in particular we are in the industry of food and beverages industry safety and i'm not saying like only focusing on food and beverages industry but all industry we have to concern about number one the safety and health okay this is very important you have to take care huh? so typo injection is one of the regulation must have how we want to ensure that they have they will be give you some certificate that saying that you get the injection and blah 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 huh? Alright, so the operation budget, so okay, the business need to estimate the budget for the operation activities. So the operation budget can be categorized into fixed asset expenditure, monthly expenses and also other expenses. Okay, and then this operation budget is important because it will have be Sorry, this operation budget is important because it will be one of the input to prepare the financial plan. So that's why when you get the right amount for the fixed asset expenditure, monthly expenses and other expenses, this 
figures will be put into your financial plan. Okay, so what is fixed asset expenditure? Okay, refers to the investment on the long term asset used in the operation to produce the product or services. Example, purchase of the machines and equipment. Okay, and then um, let's say your company is buying like, uh, let's say your company is looking like banana chips, rapid design. So you have to buy, for example, like machine to have this banana to be cut automatically. Uh, so that is example of the machines. Eh? And monthly expenses refer to payment made every month in the operations department. Example, the wages for the workers and the raw materials that purchase. Okay, so the wages for the workers and the raw materials purchase should be okay, uh, be paid every month. If not, the workers will run away. Right? And then the other expenses, these are expenses that are made and could not be categorized as fixed asset, expenditure or monthly expense because it may be one long time or maybe one time payment or it can be like uh, insurance is every month. Okay? Uh, so it's like depends, sometimes they want to be like long sum insurance okay? or maybe it's like deposit. Okay, the budget is only when earlier uh, process you want to be certain like building, okay, shop, and so you get to pay extra compared to every month, every month expenses, okay. So this is the example of the operation budget. So we do have this fixed asset, machine and equipment, um, 35,500 and factory renovation, we have 45,000. So for the raw materials, we do have 20,000. For the wages, we have 6,500 uh, 6, and then utilities 600. Factory rent is 3,000 and then for the other expenses, we have deposit for rent and deposit for utilities. So you will total up this one. So this amount will be put under financial plan. Okay. So um, the next one, we will go for the implementing schedule involving sequencing. Okay, sequencing and a lot of time. To all the project activities. So, for those who are watching here, actually, this one is under page 281. To prepare implementation schedule, entrepreneur has to decide how long each the activity and compute the requirement of people and other resources. So, the schedule normally use the time chart, which is a planning chart used to schedule resources and allocate the time. So, done chart, you can actually just Google it how it's it look like. Uh, maybe I should Google to you all. Google to you all, right? Example of guns. Okay, as you can see from here. Uh, so this is the example uh, of the gun chart. Okay, loading or no? you can see this so this is how it look like example of the gun chart how it look like okay uh it's involved like where uh maybe like this yeah your when it is time and then how long is the duration okay. so you just google example of the gun chart okay uh where is me so now, um, the importance of the project scheduling. Uh, project scheduling serves several purposes. It shows the relationship of each activity to others and to the project. And it identifies the precedence relationship among the activities. 
And the third one, um, it encourages the setting of realistic time and cost estimate for each activity and it helps make better use of people, money and materials by identifying critical bottlenecks in the operation in the project. Okay. Bottleneck in here uh, there will be like critical time we have whereby we have to produce a lot quantity but it's very limited time or maybe in terms of limited raw materials. Okay. So that we call as the bottleneck. And this is the example of the project implementation schedule. We have the incorporation of the business from January to March 2009 to months. Uh, application for the permits and license in January to April, April 2009, four months. It is four months. And if you realize this, all process will be converted into gun check. Okay. And searching for the business permits from February to March 2009 for three months. And then renovation of the permits for April 2009 is almost will be like one month. And for procurement of the uh, machines and raw materials from other to 2009 is three months. And recruitment of the label June 2001 month and installation of the machine June 2009 is one month. Okay, and then I'm done. Okay, for the operation plan will be uh, end here, and I will continue on the part of the financial plan after this inshallah. Okay, thank you.